Hello, let's chat about what is a IAM user or just services in general. It stands for Identity and Access Management. And all that basically means is that we're trying to work out who should be seeing what within AWS. Now, there's a couple of different things that are really important. Mostly that you have two different types of users. So you have a root user and then you have your IAM users. Now, the root user is really important because you only get one root user. And this is typically what you sign up with. So the email that you sign up when you first create your AWS account, this is your root user and your email becomes the username. But your root user kind of has this godlike access to everything in AWS. And that can be really dangerous because then they could actually just take down your whole system or leak all your data or do a whole bunch of stuff. So you've got to be really careful with your root user. And there's some best practice here, which is really important to pay attention to. For example, don't use your root user for everyday tasks. Not a good idea. Please create IAM users as much as you can because you can give each of them specific permissions and security settings and things like that. Turn on multi-factor authentication. Don't be lazy about this, all right? I know it's a pain to have to check your phone and get that code, but it's worth it when it's your entire business and organization and all your technical assets at stake. Turn on the multi-factor authentication for your root user and only use it when you absolutely have to if your little IAM users aren't being useful enough. Which brings us to our IAM users. There's some best practice around these guys too, all right? You need to have one IAM user per person. Please don't be sharing your accounts around. Make sure that you set up the permissions for each IAM user properly because that's where you can control who's got access to what, which is why we're here in the first place. That's what we need to be sorting out in this particular video. These are your IAM policies, all right? Don't take them lightly. Check them out. Make sure you think carefully about who should have access to what and then give each person the right permissions. Now, policies are really important. It's what we assign to each user. And you really want to follow some best practice, which is the principle of least privilege. This means that you're going to start with a very closed down sort of access, and then you're only going to give more access as it's needed. The opposite approach would be to say, I'm going to give you all the access. And then as we go, I'm going to close it down. This is not a good approach <laughs> because you will undoubtedly miss something along the way. So much better to start it with everything locked down and then you just gradually give more access. That's going to mean that everything's going to stay a lot more secure. It is a little bit more painful, but do you know what's even more painful? Losing all your data. You can also use groups. Groups are really, really fantastic because they're going to make organizing all these different users a lot easier because you might end up with a lot of users. If you're a big company, you've got a lot going on. You've got different groups of developers. They need access to different things. Then you want to make sure that things are grouped so that you can make sense out of all of these different users and permissions and policies that people have. IAM groups are fantastic for exactly this as well. You can assign a policy to an entire group and then everyone who's in that group is going to be assigned that policy. So you might have a back-end developer group, you might have a front-end developer group, you might have a DevOps group, all these different sort of things that you can use. IAM roles are also a great aspect of this whole thing. IAM roles are more for temporary access. You only want to use these if you temporarily want to give someone access to something, but you know that it's not really going to be for a forever type of gig. Because if they do this, then they have to give up all of their previous permissions that were associated with their other role. And they must be granted a additional permission that says actually you could switch roles to begin with. So you only want to make sure this is for temporary access because this stuff is a bit of a pain. Roles are good, but you only want to use them after you've set up everything. And that's our super speedy overview of IAM users and roles and policies and groups. Happy learning. See you next time.